this story is about a bee. So I have a watering fountain, or not really a watering fountain, but a watering tray for my bees to allow them to have a source of water that's nearby the hive. The watering tray isn't really a perfect kind of design. It's I hacked it together myself. I put something in a tray, basically a, um, a, a walled kind of cookie sheet sort of tray. And uh, I put something in there in the center that drips water out and creates a little like puddle that flows out from it. And it's not really the best design because it has some risks to it. When other bees are flying in to get a drink, they sometimes land on each other and knock each other down and such. Uh, when that happens and a bee is standing in a puddle of water, they get soaked and this wets down their wings and it makes it difficult for them to fly. Their wings get stuck to their, their backs, to their abdomens, and they're unable to... Uh, get their wings up and fly away and then they sometimes get fatigued when trying to struggle to get out of the water and it uh, results in them essentially drowning after a while because they lose the ability they, they lose the energy to keep their their little faces above the water it's it's pretty shallow so usually they survive um, and they just sit there waterlogged essentially until another bee knocks them out of the way or assists them. And this video is about how bees assist each other. Not quite in with, you know, saving a drowning bee here. It's a little bit different. I saved the drowning bee. Um, <laughs> that may sound confusing. Long story short, I went out to check on my bees. I saw a bee that was waterlogged and struggling. Well, she was completely fatigued, actually. She wasn't even struggling anymore. She was just stuck there in the water, keeping her, her mouth outside of the water and breathing. Uh, but she really had no energy to move. So I scooped her up and I placed her at the mouth or at the opening of one of my beehives, not knowing whether or not she was actually part from one of my colonies. So... She, from what I could tell from the behavior, she did not belong in that colony. And I want to play a video for you uh, showing what happened. Now, when I placed her in at the mouth of the hive, I walked away and went to do some gardening. When I came back, I saw something that was pretty interesting. And I wish I had got it on video, but I didn't have my camera on me at the time. I saw the bee. She had fallen or flipped over onto her back. She was struggling, and her little legs were in the air, kind of grasping at nothing. And she couldn't get up because her wings were wet. She couldn't flex them. They were stuck to her back and stuck to the to the, the floorboard of the hive opening. So I was going to then scoop her up and flip her over myself, but then I noticed something really interesting. One of the guard bees from the hive walked out from the opening, gently bit onto one of her legs and then pulled her upright and got her onto her feet and then let go and walked back into the hive. And I thought that was amazing because this is a bee, from what I can tell, based on the behavior of the other bees, does not belong to that colony. But even though she was a foreign bee, a member of that colony saw her struggling and decided to walk on out, help her up, and get her onto her feet, and then walk back away again. That was amazing. It was such an intentional action. So I ran inside, I grabbed my phone, and I ran back outside to get some video and observe the situation. And this is the, the preceding 13 minutes of video footage that I got after that event. So here is our little waterlogged bee here on the left. The bee that was just checking her out is the one that had rescued her, I believe. Well, actually, I don't know. I, I, no, because the bee had, that had rescued her had actually walked back in. I don't know if it's the same bee or not. 
but it's a guard bee. These bees that hang around by the mouth of the of the um, of the hive are basically guarding to make sure that f invaders don't come in. Now you can see one of those guard bees is licking her. What it's essentially doing is it's drying her off. That's how bees dry themselves and dry each other off, is they lick each other. That's also how they do things like get residue off of each other, honey, etc. You know, sometimes bees will get honey on themselves and they'll get stuck and they can't move their wings, they can't move their legs. Other bees of the colony will come to assist and will lick all the honey off of them. Right now, they're licking the water off of her. Watch, more bees are going to do it. You can tell that she's very fatigued. She's not moving. She's just stuck there at the mouth of the hive. The the bees had formed a bit of a wall in front of her there at the mouth of the hive, so you can't really see it from this angle. You'll get to see it later. Basically, the guard bees are saying, we know that, that you're not supposed to be here. Now, bees don't all know each other. They know the scent of their queen, and that's about it. So they don't really know each other. How they recognize members of the colony is based on the behavior of the bees. If a uh, if a bee comes in to, to rob the hive of pollen, then the other bees are going to react to that. They're going to know that they don't belong to the hive. But robber bees make it in and out with pollen all the time. It's it's a thing that happens. So they're able to, to fool the bees of the colony and get away with pollen during times of pollen scarcity, which are usually the beginning and end of pollen seasons. So take a look at this. We've got two bees now grooming her and trying to dry her off. She's right in the, right in the flight path of uh, the bees. The bees keep landing on her and she's very fatigued. And you can see she's starting to get her energy back. She started to do a little bit of self-grooming. See her using her four legs with her tongue. This one bee is really giving her a, a once-over, being very thorough. So she's getting her energy back. She's starting to feel good. So she's doing some self-grooming. We've got a few bees still checking her out. Now they're kind of walking away. But they still haven't totally lost interest in her just yet. Watch for a bit. You can tell by her shaking and her ins her instability, she's still very fatigued. But you can see now her wings are free from her back. See that? In the, at this angle, you can see that her bees are no longer plastered to her back. So her, her bees, her wings are no longer plastered to her back. That's something that the other bees helped out with when they were licking her dry that managed to get her uh, her wings free from her back. Now here her little foreleg is actually stuck in some um, some kind of residue at the mouth of the hive. There's some sticky stuff there. Some of it may be fresh propolis, I'm not really sure. Uh, I repositioned myself at this point because I was crouched down at the base of the hive trying to record this. She gets her forelegs stuck a couple different times on some residue in front of the mouth of the cave. You'll see at some point later on in the video where I actually go and help her out, help her get unstuck. But see, the guard bees are, are still, they're not sure of her, so they're basically walling her off from the hive. And she's not making any moves toward the hive yet. Here we got another bee checking her out, saying, hmm, are you okay? Need any more assistance? All right. At this point, the bees have not yet accepted her into the colony. And so they're still walling her off from the hive. Let me 
she's doing what she can to get herself dried off and groomed. She's getting her energy back. She's not as, um, b before when the bees would land on her, she would be exhausted for a bit, but now she's recovering more readily. Look at that, she's getting a little more vigorous with the self-grooming. I think this is where she gets her forelegs stuck in that propolis there on the ground. Yep, that's it. Now she's in a little trouble and she's struggling. she's free and coincidentally she's also closer to the mouth of the hive and the bees haven't totally walled her off yet like there's still one guard bee keeping an eye on her and kind of blocking her off but the others don't seem as concerned anymore there's not like a big wall there anymore here comes another guard bee to check her out and see what, how she's doing Looks like she's got a little more energy, so she's more vigorously grooming herself, I think. still uncoordinated and look at that there are wings totally free at this point she's actually flexing her wings so that's a good sign she's still a little discombobulated who knows how long she was floating there in the water Look at this one bee here fanning. It was actually a, a cold day, so why that bee was fanning, I don't know. It's not like it needed to keep the hive cool. This bee fanning may actually be helping her dry off. I don't know. I don't know if that behavior is intentional, is intentionally trying to help her or not. I don't know if she's intentionally positioning herself near that bee to help dry off. I'm not really sure. But I'm sure it's helping. Now see, as she's gotten closer to the hive, there's a bit of a, a bit more of a wall that has formed there. But still, it's kind of a loose wall. It doesn't look too bad. And what we're focusing on are the bees that are actually on the ground, not the ones that are upside down hanging from the edge of the, of the mouth. So it's kind of a loose wall. They're not really trying very hard to, to turn her away. And they're still trying to help her out. They're still licking her. They're still checking her to make sure she's okay and investigating. At this point, it's hard to tell whether or not she's been accepted into the colony, but you can tell she's she's clearly got herself oriented toward the mouth of the hive.
She hasn't changed her position at all. She's going and moving toward the entrance more. She's getting a little bit of pushback from a guard there. It's kind of walling her off. They're doing a little bit of like a posturing kind of messaging. Yeah, see that shaking of the abdomen? There's, I'm not sure if that was a rejection or sort of a, a threat or something. But after a moment, it seems like that particular guard bee eventually gives in and kind of lets her pass. So now she's got a few other guard bees there that are eyeing her. I mean, that one signal from the guard bee shaking the abdomen, that was very intentional. That was definitely messaging to her. But it seems like, oops, she's fallen over. <laughs> but it seems like they've generally kind of accepted her. However, there's still a little bit of a wall there that she has to get through. They haven't opened to allow her passage. When I was watching this, I was thinking that one of the bees may have actually helped pull her back up again. But after seeing it up close, I realized, nope, she helped herself up. See that? At this point, there's no more of a wall there, it looks like. It looks like they've gone ahead and cleared the way for her. I see one leg behind her, or ahead of her, but it looks like they're letting her in. There we go. I'd call that a success. The colony has accepted her as one of their own. So I just thought that was pretty fascinating, and I really wanted to show that to others and let them see how this interaction works. I wish I had caught the bee. Uh, I wish I'd caught on video the bee that had, had had pulled her upright, because it was such an intentional action. It, it's one of those things where it's it's a calculated decision. It's not a random kind of thing. The Bees help each other out even when they don't know each other, even when they're not from the same colony. So I thought that was pretty fascinating, and I hope others find it fascinating. Anyways, thank you for watching.